My name is Aaron and I like to fix stuff. Today we're going to be working on this Craftsman snowblower. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm still waiting on parts for the Toro. So I wanted to find something that I could do today. It's nice out just to get outside and mess with something. So I have got a few snowblowers that I want to start getting ready for winter. Um, this was given to us by a gentleman who owned the LA-115 uh, riding mower. You can see he's just got bolts in here for the shear pins. This one's missing one altogether. That's an issue. But I was hoping that this was going to be just kind of an easier, quick project just to get something done. It uh, turns over, sounds like it has compression, the gas tank is dry completely, so that's good. It does have oil in it, a little dark, we'll have to change that out. Um, I did smell it. does not smell like gas, so that's good. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to pop this cover off so you can see better. And then I'm going to get out the, uh, the uh, carburetor underneath, just pop the foot bowl off, see the condition of the carb, as long as that's good. I could check for spark, but it's so bright out here that you and I probably aren't going to see it. So my thought is as long as the carb's good, we'll button everything back up. Throw some gas in and just see what happens. It does have an electric start, so we can test that out too. You know, we'll test the drive and all that fun stuff. If this works, I'm not going to bother painting it. Uh, most of my snowblowers and equipment, I like to paint. Get it all cleaned up looking pretty, but this one isn't too bad. You know, it's rusty. There's some rust spots. But I figured this will be more um, like an economy model. This is a 26 inch cut, 9 horsepower Tecumseh engine. So um, really I just I want something quick and um, the amount of profit difference I'm going to have between painting this thing and not is just not worth the time to me right now. So we'll leave this one on the cheaper end and hopefully that'll help it sell quicker. So that being said let's get into it. To get at, let me get this cover off, we got these two mounting screws here on the side. There's one more up here that also holds the dipstick. And then we just got to pop these knobs off, and that should give us access. It feels kind of weird working on snow blowers when it's this hot out, but. I know winter will be coming sooner than we anticipate. It usually does. So I figure I got a couple of months still. If I can get a couple snowblowers ready to go for that first snowfall. I've already got two sitting in the shed that are ready. And I think I'll have a total of six if I get all of these running. So, that would be nice. These just pop off. I don't have a whole lot of Tecumseh parts. Most of the stuff that I have is Briggs. And even that, most of the stuff that I have, a couple years ago I spent like a hundred bucks and cleared out just bins from a small engine shop that was uh, retiring. And um, I don't have good luck with um, the parts I have being the parts I need, if that makes sense. Yeah, that Toro, man. 
parts after parts after parts. Just when I think I've got it, something else needs to be fixed. So I just put in the order last night for new piston rings, um, a crankshaft seal, new head gasket, and what was the fourth thing? I don't remember. So there's our card. I think this should be a half inch on the bowl nut. Yeah, it's going to be probably like a week before I get those Toro parts in. So I'm trying not to get too deep into other stuff. I'm still waiting on a deck belt for a customer's machine. Doesn't look too bad. So I got two other projects that I'm working on. My multitasking is not the greatest, so having too many projects at a time can be pro problematic. There's some crud here on the bowl gasket. But overall, I mean, that looks pretty decent. So, because I'm not gonna dig into it, we're probably gonna have to. It's usually how it works. But for right now, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna throw this on. We'll test out some of the stuff. I can't remember, the guy gave me two snow blowers and he there was a third one he was gonna give me, but there was a there was a literal tree growing through it. And it was an older like a, <coughs> Jacobson. Just wasn't really worth it to me. Hey, I just threw some uh, gas in the tank. Let's see. I'm not getting anything out of the primer bulb, so there must be a air leak in there somewhere. Let's just see what happens. I got choke on. That's good. Um, it's surging and it seems to like the choke. So there's probably a fuel restriction in the carburetor, even though it didn't look too bad. Like I said, whenever I don't take it off and service it, it usually ends up needing it. So I'm going to have to take all this back off again and then we'll get the carb off. Before we take the whole carb off, um, for one, this tire's gone flat. Other one seems to be holding, but this one's got some cracks in it. So we'll have to take a look at that and see what's going on. But uh, behind this cap, right here, this is a cap that should come off. This is like a little rubber cover. And then here's our low idle jet right here. So oftentimes when it's surging like that, it's a restriction in the low idle jet. So we can take this out and perhaps just clean that. 
If I can get it out without dropping it. It doesn't look too bad. You can see through it. So I was hoping that would be an easy an easy solution. But it never is. So I get this back in here so I don't lose it. We also got to figure out why the primer bulb wasn't doing anything. So in order to get this off, we have to break it right here. You don't have to. You can take the whole intake elbow manifold whatever you want to call it up right here um, this is the hose for the primer oftentimes these rubber hoses are real real tight Anyways, I gotta get a wrench for these two. Then we've got our governor arm with the throttle link and the choke. Sorry, these, these are both throttle controls. This one is based on the speed that you have the throttle set at, and this one is the the direct governor control that, that controls the throttle based on the RPMs of the engine. So it doesn't exceed what the governor is set at. This is your choke right here. This lever. This has the arm that controls the choke plate. So I'm going to break these two nuts off. There is a gasket here. And then we've got fuel line back here the primer we might have to take this whole cover off to get at the back side of the primer it's kind of it's kind of cracked but it doesn't seem like I don't know I'm just not getting anything out of it so um yeah let's start there hey this uh primer hose is already ripping so I'm just gonna more or less tear it off I think we're probably gonna have to replace that anyways it's very dry if not we can just cut it there's enough room in here we can just cut this end off stick it back on so that one's off we can separate these nuts on the other side with just a Phillips screw driver They've got these, uh, whatever you want to call it, lock washers. So it kind of holds it in place. This one's a little bit tougher to get at. All right, I got this one on the back off. Like so. This uh, fuel line's in a tricky spot, kind of, and I also want to pinch the line. There's no shutoff. Let's see if we can get this linkage out first. Just to give us a little bit more room. Fuel line is, is pretty crusty too. Let's see. There's not a 
whole lot of room. Yeah, our clip just disintegrated. The hose clamp on here. That's not good. Have to get a new one of them. So I don't want to take it off yet because I want to clamp this line off. I should just use some needle nose vice grips. It's probably not the greatest, especially on old lines like this. If it's that dry and brittle, you can damage the line with the vice grips. So just use caution. They make actual line pliers for this. So I'm just going to use a combination of these hose pliers and a little screwdriver. Hopefully we can get it started. It's turning, but it does not want to come off the barb. And this one might be getting replaced too, because it is, it's on there. It would be easier if I could just get this linkage out of the way. It's so close. I keep hitting the uh, the little dump valve in the carb bowl, so it keeps dripping gas out of the bowl. We're getting it now. Ah. All right, let's try that. We're not plugged off. I didn't put a whole lot of gas in here, but enough. There. That was a nice mess. And now that comes out. And there's our carburetor with a mangled gasket, as usual. All right, let's go inside. Pardon the mess. I got uh, parts for that Toro all over the place. Just gonna drain out the rest of this fuel. You said the bowl didn't look bad, so I didn't think much of it. I'll have to see if I have a bowl gasket or not. This one's pretty crunchy. But we'll hang on to it for now. A pen. Float sounds good. Needle looks perfect. Okay. So. Really, we've got our low idle jet that we already looked at. And that looked fine. I 
And we'll clean that all out. Um, the main jet and emulsion tube. Let's see if we can press that out. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that with a pick. That looks pretty clear. Um, I suppose, sorry, the main jet is in here. There's a little bit of debris. But man, I mean, overall, it looks pretty clean. Uh, that's about it. The seat is one of the neoprene or rubber seats. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And that's all there is to it. I don't think there's any reason to soak this. I do have to source another gasket because this one is destroyed. But I think I have those. So I'm just going to clean this stuff, put it all back together. I got to find a, a better bowl gasket. And then uh, we'll see if it runs any better. I've got the carb cleaned up and put back together, and I even found a new bowl gasket. So that's looking good. Before I throw it back on the machine, however, we need to figure out why there's an air leak coming from this primer vacuum tube. And if I, I listen correctly, it sounds like it's coming from back behind the shroud. So we need to take the shroud off. And unfortunately, in order to take the shroud off, I got to move the handles either off or back. And that's where it gets complicated. Because, like, you know, in order to clear the shroud, you know, we, we need three or four inches to, in order to move it back. But we're right up against the handlebars so we gotta take all those off um these there should be two half inch on the top no big deal there there's one more down here, nope, that's a 7 sixteenths. I'm not sure if these are original, because on both sides, they're these 7 sixteenths. I can't remember. This is common. This is a common setup for like an Aaron's model, because they all use the Tecumseh engines. It's a very common engine for snowblowers, even though I think Tecumseh doesn't make parts or engines anymore, which means they're going to be exceptionally harder to find parts, at least at some point. This is the electric starter. It's just held on by two screws. And they're, they're fairly long screws. But the nice thing about the fact that most or a lot of brands use to come to engines is that the parts are interchangeable amongst brands. So I have several parts mowers. Mowers. I'm still stuck in summer. Snowblowers. So we should be able to find parts that we need for this. As long as it is dealing with or relating to the engine. Once we start looking at body specific stuff, then we might have a harder time. But um, 
Let's see what we got to do to get these um, handlebars out of the way. Right, so these are going to be half inch as well. It's uh, amazing how fast a 8x12 shed shop will fill up when you've got a snowblower, pressure washer, leaf blower, half a disassembled engine, and various other parts. It's fairly tight in here. So I'm gonna just manipulate stuff around. Okay, a little closer. That's uh, not the OEM bolt on that one. So, let's see here. Start to work this out. Can except we've also got this linkage here. Need to split. Probably this middle retainer here. And that looks like a three A's. Because that's holding too much tension on these arms together. So perhaps if we take that out, we'll have enough room to it at all. There's one. There's two. So It's not going to do a lot of good to us <laughs> in this condition, but it'll let us get access. Maybe we should uh, take the throttle plate off. I think that's the last thing holding the shroud in. Should be two quarter inch bolts.
て。Look at that. We've got ourselves a little mouse house. It's always good to take the air cleaner or the、uh, the shroud off that covers the fins, especially when you've got an unknown machine. Because rodents like to build nests in here, and if that plugs up the fins, <clears throat> let me show you here. So the fan spins; it draws air in from the front, and the shroud, the metal part that we just took off, directs the air over the engine. And it goes through these metal fins, and that's what cools the engine on an air-cooled engine. If these fins are all covered up with mouse debris, it's not going to cool because the air can't flow through. Luckily, in this case, most of the debris was right here. It wasn't packed into the fins. But if that was the case, you'd have to, you know, blow it all out, clean all the stuff out. That's not too big a deal. But what I was curious at was this vacuum tube because it seemed like. It was not it seemed like there was an air leak. So what we can do this part was split when I took it off. Cut that clean. And now I can feel vacuum. So it doesn't seem like there's a leak. With my finger over it, I can't push air through. And with my finger on it, after I push it, I can feel vacuum. Okay, we're、uh, we got the shroud put back together.、I'm、trying to put this、uh, hose clamp back on. This、uh, might get a little tricky because of this.、Uh, Vice grips that I have in here. There's not a whole lot of room. Without leaking a lot of fuel, <clears throat> I 
There we go. The hose is on. Now if I can just get this clamp down. Get that over the top. Before I get too far, I gotta get this linkage. Put in. Okay, I had to take the fuel line off again and then put this choke linkage in. But now we've got our gasket. And I can see a problem. We're, we're below this linkage here and the fuel line should be above it apparently because I can't I can't lift this up into position so I gotta do that all over again all right so after I spilled a ton of gas on the floor I was able to get this on the fuel line hose clamp is still not on, but it's at least in position, so it's filling the float bowl instead of dumping on the floor. I guess that's one way to clean the shop floor. Now I just want to get these last mounting bolts in. Like I said, I found an intake gasket that was similar. It's probably not the right one, but 
it's close enough that it should be okay. <clears throat> Get these all snugged up. Main thing is that it's not going to interfere with anything else. And you can already hear it's making a difference in the sound it makes. Unfortunately, that dump valve, apparently that's got a leak in the uh, gasket there, so we're going to have to address that every time we hit it. It dumps out a little bit. So that should be good. Next thing before we put this cover back on, I was thinking that we should probably take a look at the spark plug that's in here. Yeah, it's dirty, but um, you can't even see. <clears throat> it's carboned up, but not too crazy. I suppose maybe we could uh, plug this in. Now that it's a little bit darker out, Maybe we'll try to pull it over and see if we get any spark. Yeah, I see some spark. So that should be good. So probably going to be it for tonight. We know we have spark and fairly confident that the fuel system is looking good. For tomorrow I got to fix this tire because that one keeps going flat. Um, we should probably hit this dump valve in the card bowl because every time I prime it, oh, now it's not doing it. Yeah, there, it kind of drips. So that's not good. Um, it's just not sealing. It's probably old rubber. We'll see if we have a replacement gasket we could throw in there. Um, it did run the other day when we tried it, so hopefully after addressing the carburetor issue, it's going to run a little bit better. And then we can check the drive and the auger, but that'll be for tomorrow. I finally got the bench cleaned up from the Toro engine, so that's awesome. Charging the battery for it. Um, we're working on this snowblower still. Both of the tires, or neither of the tires, are holding air. You can see there's a pretty decent sized crack on the sidewall here. So, same thing on this side. You can see right along the top here. So I think I'm gonna, I tried putting oil in, it's still not holding. So I think we're going to have to put some tubes in. The tread is super nice. They're just dry rotted. Luckily, there's a local auction in my area that's got a whole bunch of tubes. And I think that they have this size, so I might be able to pick up some tubes fairly cheap. I think it's like for riding mower tires, it's usually like, I want to say $18 for a pair. So 
Hopefully I can get these cheaper than that. It looks like we just got two three ace bolts on the belly pan. I want to take this off to see what's going on with the drive in the friction disc because when I was messing with the tires, I'll show you. I got this precariously balanced. Can you hear that? It just doesn't sound kosher. So let's see what's going on. Oh wait. No, it's got two. So one more right here on either side. That's gonna be hard. The I tried taking the wheels off. Yeah. I tried taking the wheels off and they were seized into place. So let me get you set up here. Unless I can get those wheels off, it's gonna kind of get at the easy mess with this extension gets in there. Oh, that's why it is a chain. Yeah, nice little raspberry bush looks like. Oof. So what do we got here? One of the belts is off. This chain does not look super good. Friction disc looks okay. So, I'm guessing that we just need to clean all of this up. Because I, I feel like I didn't have a problem switching. I can't sit this thing all the way up on the auger. Because the blade or the auger protrudes out the auger housing, so it's like rounded in the front. Normally, it's flat, and you can just stand it up. This one doesn't want to do that. So let me think here. I mean, this thing looks like it was underwater for a while because everything's got a fair amount of rust on here. And I don't know, well this belt is in place, so this one's got to be for the, for the impeller. And I can't, I'm not going to be able to get at it because I have to hit the tensioner. I'd like to get this chain off and clean it and uh, relube it, but I don't know if that's worth the hassle. Thank you. 
take we'll take this belt cover off. Two more. Three eighths nuts or bolts. With a washer. I'm gonna struggle with this thing. Sometimes the chute has to be in a specific position. So should be So, oh, we're so far over. We're going to get it. We got to take tension off of here to get the belt through. The front side. How in the heck did that even happen? It's tough because, like, I gotta get my hand there, but then I can't. Maybe we should just uh, start over and get it on the bottom half and then work on the top so in order to do that we gotta crack down this belt guide loosen that guy up okay Okay, we're off now because I want to be able to get that on there. Okay, we're back on. I think that's the right way. Let's see here. Oh. For that way, I had to disconnect the cable. Alright. Yeah, tension goes in. That's pretty good. Not a lot of slop in there. And drive. I mean, everything's rusty, but I don't see any real issues. I just want to tighten this back down again. That should be good. Um, let's throw this cover back on. And then we'll clean up the underside.
Alright, there's that. The friction disc rides on this shaft here. The closer to the center, the slower it is, the further out, the faster it is. So right now we're in position six, which is the fastest, and it's all the way out. As I change positions, it goes to the left. And that feels pretty good. A lot of times, if you're having a hard time changing positions, if it feels like it's just real restricted, that means that this shaft is dirty. And it's dirty, but it's more sticky from old lube. The important thing is that you want to keep this surface clean and this friction disc clean. Otherwise, uh, these two parts have to be a, a dry surface because that's what drives the wheels. If it's if it's got any sort of lube on it, the friction disc is just going to spin and it's not going to drive these tires. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, what else do we have to do? Another thing that I thought was kind of weird is there's this which should be, I would think, the kill for the coil or the ground, but it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Looks like our breather tube has got some shoe in it. I think everything else is looking pretty good. Uh, like I said, we got to put tubes in these tires, and we got to do an oil change. But let's go ahead and throw this belly pan back on. We need new shear pins, and there's no grease zerk. On either side. Gear case isn't leaking, so that's good. Okay, it's the next day. A um, couple things. I ran to the store. Had to get a battery for the Toro, and so I picked up some slime for the tires. I opted that route as opposed to getting tubes, just because I didn't want to put tubes in. Uh, I was having a hard time getting this thing started, and I realized the throttle plate, I had to spun that almost 180 degrees around, and it was underneath the fuel line, so it couldn't go up. Now that that's in the correct position, seems to be working fine. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to button this back up and drain the oil and everything is looking good. Chocolate milk. Yeah, I'd say that hasn't been changed in a while. I don't know what the capacity is on this. I do have a little bit of oil, but probably not enough. So we'll see. I might, uh, if I have enough, we'll fire it up and... Uh, if not, I'll have to wait until the next time I go to town. We just added some fresh oil. I uh, ran to the store this morning. 
So let's see how this thing fires up. Well, it runs, uh, it still pops at high idle and it, it runs, it clears up with um, a little bit of choke. So I think either we got an air leak or I gotta take that carb off and clean it again. Yeah, fun stuff. But I think, um, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that we've already gone through. I will, I will get this thing squared away. Uh, it's Probably a week or so later, I had to go back to work, so I was kind of delayed here in finishing this up. Uh, this left tire was not holding, even after we put some slime in it. Or wait, it was the right tire. Right tire. So I put some ATF in it yesterday. It's holding better. We'll see. I'm going to wait probably a week or so just to make sure it's going to stay inflated before I list this thing. I do have tubes coming tomorrow, so if this doesn't work, I'll throw a tube in. Um, the other thing is, we got that uh, low idle circuit needle, and that's a metered jet. The old one had uh, crushed the orifice, so it wasn't getting any fuel flow. So I think that had something to do with the surging. So put that one in, and then yesterday while I was messing with the tire, I just wanted to fire this thing up because, like I said, it had been sitting for a week or so. Just wanted to make sure it was going to start up. And it was surging even with the new jet in there. So I was kind of frustrated and uh, 
just messing around looking at it and uh, I adjusted the throttle position screw the stop screw if you can see it it's you know it's right down by the throttle plate down this uh, little crack here you gotta take the cover off to get at it but basically it was too fast it was the throttle position was engaging too quick so then at the high speed at the top end where we were getting that surging problem it was just pushing it too far so i think that was uh causing it to over rev which was activating the governor and, and, and causing some of the surging so i backed that out a little bit and it seemed to uh get smoother so i just want to fire this up one last time and make sure after sitting overnight that we're still not going to have any of that issue so we'll give it a little prime and i did test the electric start and that fired up right away too So, I, I mean, I guess it's still surging on a cold start. It smooths out after 20, 30 seconds. So I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of perplexed by that. It's not a fuel issue. It's not a carb issue. Uh, yesterday when I was trying to figure it out, I was putting the choke back on to, to see if that would smooth it out. Because if it was a fuel restriction, then it would be running lean. So by choking it, that would be getting the air mixture more dialed in. And that, so if that caused it to smooth out, that would be an indication of it being a carb problem or a fuel related issue. That's not the case. Also, when I had the cover off, I was spraying carb cleaner at all of the gasket surfaces on the intake, checking for an air leak. And when you do that, if the engine revs where you spray it that means that there's an air leak which allows that extra fuel to get in that didn't happen either so it's not an air leak it's not a fuel leak and i've gone through and adjusted the governor the governor back to factory spec which is pretty simple to do and like i said i adjusted that throttle play a little bit but i can't think of anything else that would be causing that so i guess what i'm getting at is that i'm done with this project um i'm just going to disclose that when i list it and when i if I sh if you know somebody wants to buy it or whatever i'll tell them i'll show them it smooths out after about 20 seconds and then it runs fine so i i don't think that's going to be you know a huge factor but uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up this project here and uh, get ready for the next one. So if you guys have thoughts on that issue, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and then hopefully I can learn something for the next time. Until next time, thanks for watching.